In this video, it's the foreign Ford head-to-head -head as Aussie Ford Fairmont meets American Crown Vic and Matt of Furious Driving. Hello. Let's have a look around his rather lovely Crown Victoria. So it's slightly unexpected to have America versus Australia. It's going to be very interesting. We haven't yet driven each other's cars, so um, watch our respective channels to see what our thoughts are. But um, what, why do you own an American ex-police car? Uh, there's no sensible answer to this really, um, but I've wanted one for absolutely years. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I went to America was in 2002, not long after the whole 9-11 thing. Yeah. And um, it, it seemed like a nice thing to do to go to New York and kind of just give a support to the city. Mm -hmm. And the first car I got in off the plane was a Crown Victoria. Uh -huh. And every taxi we got in was a Crown Victoria. And I've been back to America quite a few times in the meantime. And every time I've been there, I've been in Crown Vicks and then I've started sort of looking into what makes them interesting, what makes them special. And, mm. and then I've started stopping and taking photos of police cars and getting very strange looks from policemen asking, <laughs> why are you taking a photo of my car? Indeed, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, trying not to get shot doing that. And um, to the point that the last time we went over there was in Santa Fe and um, there's one Crown Vic taxi left because I'm mm -hmm. not being defleeted now. The last one was built in 2011, 2012. Crikey. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's one Santa, uh, Crown Vic taxi left and we let all the other taxis go through until we could leave <laughs> in the Crown Vic. Oh, that is so, so many of us would do. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, so finally I decided I absolutely had to get one. And so um, I've been looking around for a couple of years actually. I nearly bought one just before lockdown. But mm -hmm. the, the cost of shipping and duty and tax and everything really put me off. And I went back to the drone board and ignored it and then COVID happened and I kind of put it to the back yeah, burner. Yeah. And then 2011 marked the anniversary of September the 17th was the last, 2011, the last one rolled off the line. It was a, uh -huh. a GCC Gulf Coast export car, mm -hmm. which is police interceptor spec chassis with nice plush trim. And so that marked 10 years. And I've been looking, I knew that was coming up and I've been looking harder and harder and harder. And it got to the point I was on Auto Tempest every single day until I knew every single Crown Victoria for sale in America. Mm -hmm. And you could have shown me any like a tail light, a hubcap, a bumper detail. I told you where it was in the country, how much it was and what was wrong with it and why I wasn't buying it. Blimey. And then one Sunday over breakfast, just a couple, almost 10 years to the day after they went out of production, I was looking at an eBay auction that just flagged up mm -hmm. and it was ending in 15 minutes that I hadn't seen before. I thought, well, how on earth have I missed this? And so I read through the description and it was basically everything I wanted. I wanted a Crown Vic and it had to be a P71, which is the three letters in the center of the VIN number, which signify it's a police car, mm -hmm. not a taxi cab, because that's a different fleet car, not a yeah, yeah. car. Not and I wanted one that had history as well. Like, you know, a genuine car that had service history, that got a story to tell, mm -hmm. which makes it even harder to find because most of them have got a history have been just absolutely flogged to death. Yeah. They sit at the side idling for all day, every day, 24 hours a day, and then suddenly go into full acceleration and that ruins them. Mm -hmm. Or they come from hot states, which ruins the paint. They come from wet states, which ruins the chassis. Um, they had driven into things. This has had, I think, at least three wings on it because it's been driven into things. Yeah. Um, but talking of chassis, that's the unusual thing about yeah. this. This is still a separate chassis vehicle. Oh, it is, isn't yeah. It? It's the last body on frame chassis in America. Wow. And so it's, it, the, the chassis goes back to 1978. Mm. And they just changed it over three generations. Um, there was the, the brick, the aero, and the whale. Okay. So the, the nicknames for the three generations. And I'm sure you can guess what that signifies. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this is the whale. Yeah. Um, they didn't really change much shape. I think you can actually interchange doors between the Series 2 and Series 3 cars. It's only really the, the front and rear ends that, that changed. Wow. But yeah, no, I put a silly offer in. I'd like $250 below the asking price, which is mm -hmm. about $4,750. $7 and I'm um, thinking, well, I've, I've made the effort. If I don't win it, at least I've made the effort. And within seconds, and God knows what time it was in Ohio, the uh, bing, you bought a car. And I suddenly thought- What a feeling, yeah. That kind of empty feeling in your stomach. I've bought a car. Yeah. I've just spent five grand I haven't got, and I've somehow got to get it home now. Oh gosh. <laughs> what yeah. am I going to do? Um, so yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a weird bit of circularity really, mm. but we've got two Fords here that were never sold here, no. have made it here, and they're both 2001. Yeah. And yeah. both rather old fashioned. We've oh, got live so. axles with coil springs in both of these mm. with a Watts linkage. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Sh should we have a nose at the bonnet? Yes. It's on the other side because it's they drive on the wrong side over there. Oh. It's very confusing. Very. What are you doing, America? Very unhelpful. I love the scratches on the bonnet, by the way. Is, it, is that someone sliding across yee style? I'm going to say yes, but yes. I think he went in the back of a truck just for a bought it. No, don't say that. No, definitely <laughs> cops sliding across the bonnet. Well, because this is a detective one, isn't it? This was it? a detective's car, yes. I, I purely by chance, there's a uh, 
friend in Ohio. This came from a town called Beechwood, Ohio, mm -hmm. um, which is just on the shores of Lake Michigan. So it turns out it's not a nice warm part of the country like I thought it was. No, was Michigan's bad. Well, I didn't read Michigan. I read Ohio, and I thought that's somewhere near kind of Utah, Oklahoma mm -hmm. kind of way. It's really not. It's one of those heavily salted counties. Yeah. <laughs> um, luckily, it's quite a rich town, so they wash the, the chassis quite frequently. Excellent. So this is the modular two-valve V8 4.6, as mm -hmm. in the Mustang and Lincoln Town Car, which is the same car, Mercury Marauder, which is the same car. Rover 75? Rover 75, yes. Yeah, yes. the V8 and, and, version. And the MG, yeah. 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 Uh, there's various different versions of this, the main difference being the inlet and exterior manifold, mm -hmm. element, exterior outlet. Um, and being a police car, it's designed to run with lots of cooling additional, I can take the panel off for you. So it's got extra coolers all over the place. So oh, as gosh. well as the oil rate um, being cooled, yeah. the gearbox, the transmission, the different, uh, differential, I don't think it gets cooled. Um, but everything is cooled. Oh, power steering, I think someone told me the other day, gets cooled. That everything is designed so it can run forever. It can yeah. just sit and idle until it runs out of petrol, basically. Um, interesting thing, no, no sound deadening. Oh, no. Um, so hot state cars are idle all day. The bonnet paint flakes off. Ah, so you have to look for that. And that's a, that's a good indicator that it's been left idling yeah. for long periods like by a highway patrol. Cool. Well, should we climb aboard for yes, my first absolutely. impressions of inside the beast? Yeah, first of all, I've got to get into the passenger side, which always feels a bit peculiar. And gosh, this is um, firmly American, where my Fairmont feels surprisingly European inside. This feels very American. And you feel a long way away. I do. I, the first time I drove it, to do filming in it, I put a GoPro on this window and I stopped to go and start the GoPro up and tried to lean across and I yeah. couldn't reach it with my seatbelt on. <laughs> yeah, so, same problem in that. There's one reason, I, I love having the camera on the opposite window, but mm. I can't actually reach it in there, no. so I often end up with it on the windscreen instead. <laughs> but yeah, sea of grey plastic, Yeah, electric it's... window switches down here, column, column gear shift. shift. Cause that was one of the things, wasn't it? You got bench seats, but you got the column shift. Well, in the, in the cop cars, you see we've got these, this is the standard equipment, two individual seats and the mm -hmm. rubber flooring as well. But the patrol cars have a huge bank of equipment just here. Uh -huh. There's no room for a gear shift yeah. in the center um, because it's a detective but car. I'm all for that. that. I think that is a, a great idea. It's quite nice, yeah. Yeah, on so, an automatic. It makes sense. You don't need it down there like you would yeah. on a manual. Is that genuine mileage? It is, yeah. I've got all of the police um, service records. Um, wow. I've managed to get, I used the title to work out where the car came from, did my own detective work to figure things out. Mm -hmm. And um, got hold of the, the motor pool for the town, mm -hmm. where all the government and state cars are, are looked after. Got an email address for the manager. Yeah. I emailed him and said, any chance you could send me the, uh, the service history? So I've got eight pages of A4 of service history for this wow. car. Everything, down to the time it lost a hubcap. And was Blimey. replaced. So, uh, yeah, it's all genuine. That's and amazing. Because it was a detective car, it's not got thousands of idle hours as well. No, what, no. In 2004, I think it is, they went over to a digital dashboard, which gives you an idle hour counter. Mm -hmm. Which is why I was looking for a 2004 onwards car. But yeah, wonderful. These don't. So how long have you had the car in the UK now? It arrived just before Christmas. In okay. 2000, uh, what year is it now? 22, 2021. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, but I booked an auto electrician to go and do the, the lighting works for me. Yeah, yeah. And he kind of went quiet on me and after he came to look at the car. So it sat, didn't go anywhere for about two or three weeks across Christmas until oh, the year. Oh, that must have been frustrating. It was, yeah. And so and then I just thought, I'll do it myself. And then I got stuck on the fog lights and I got a mobile electrician, someone else to come around and he did it for me. So it took... Best part of a month before anything happened on that front. Mm. Meanwhile, obviously, you've got to wait for the title to arrive, as you know. Yeah. And then, you, yeah, that involves DVA and Inland Revenue talking to each other. Nice. Which is yeah. like the two yeah. slowest organisations in the country yeah. getting together and slowing things down. Yeah, and it's a lot easier to import a car that's over 10 years old. So that's yes. the easy way. Mm. Like if it's yeah. something newer, things get a lot more complicated. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd have had to do a lot more to, to change it because it's got weird front lights because mm. America. Yeah. Um, I'd have had to completely change all of those to rewire the front end lighting too. Gosh. But it will go through an MOT and it's okay to get through without IVAing it on that. Mm. Um, yeah, also it came with the most basic radio you've ever seen. Um, it's got a cassette player. Well, that's an update. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, I meant, to bring, I meant to chuck it in the boot this morning to show you. Basically, it's a five-channel oh, five um, AM, FM, I think. Mm -hmm. No radio, no tape, sorry, no anything else at all. Gosh. And the volume control, no matter which way you turn it, they break, so they only go up. Oh, nice. Let's get louder and louder. Yeah. And a few people have commented saying, yeah, that was in my patrol mm. car. I had that all the time. It was a nightmare. I know we've got a boot release button that kind of looks a bit aftermarket. Yeah, that's standard though. That's a P71 thing. Okay. And the dr driver's door to your left, mm -hmm. there is a button to open the fuel flap, which you'll notice is probably quite worn. Um, 
down, down lower. Oh, down, down low. Oh, down, down here, lower. tucked away. Lower, yeah. lower. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is normally where the boot release lives mm-hmm. on a civilian car, but on a police car, that has moved to the centre so that either of the two people in the front can jump into the boot yeah. really quickly in an emergency situation. Yeah, I see we've got a few holes for various yeah. radios or whatever. As Definitely well. would have had a radio. I don't know if it had lights hidden in it because, mm-hmm. it was, again, detective car wouldn't have had exterior lights. This is what they would call a slick top because yeah. there's nothing on the roof. Ah, yeah. Um, but it may well have had lights hidden in the tail lights on the rear parcel shelf mm-hmm. behind the grill. I don't know. So now we've been arrested and we're in the back of the vehicle. And uh, <laughs> despite the fact we got all the, um, is that vinyl? It is vinyl, wiped yeah. clean for, for sanitation because Gosh. obviously people who are being thrown in the back of police cars aren't always at their best. No, they might. But have... it is actually really comfortable it is, back isn't it? here. It's a Loads lovely soft room. seat. Yeah, yeah. plenty of. Leg room, I've got head room are plenty as it's, well. It's huge. Yeah, gosh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, not, not so bad here, but uh, if you are here, you're probably having a very bad time of things. Yes. Mm. Well, as my son climbed in for the first time, he said, it feels like a prison car. I said, well, there's a reason for that. Yeah, yeah just be glad it hasn't got the uh, whole, whole frame in the back. <laughs> oh, do you know, that makes the, the leg room disappear completely because it's a huge car. Yeah. But when that taxi frame, because it's the same as in the taxis, oh, okay. you have like no foot race space at all. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, no. w- weirdly, uh, I was out in Betty um, a few months ago and we encountered some American police spec Crown Vicks on the motorway in Wales. So mm. it was interesting <laughs> to compare. But yeah, they, they were just full of equipment. Oh, yeah. yeah. So much stuff. Yeah, some with people with the uniform cars, they do. They collect absolutely everything. Um, yeah, because I think the cars are stripped at end of service. Normally, not yeah. always. Sometimes you get lucky and you find a car with everything on it still. Blimey. Because what often happens is because the way the police work in America, the, the way they're funded and things, mm-hmm. a big force like LA, New York, they'll buy a car, equip it with everything. And then when it gets to the end of its life, it gets sold onto a smaller force and then uh-huh. it gets trickles down, down, yeah, down, yeah. down to a tiny little tiny hick town in the middle of nowhere mm. and they get a 20 year old car. And so often they do sell it with the equipment because it's going to other law enforcement. Excellent. Although, so, so is that an original uh, spec police light for it? If the police in America buy their lights from Amazon, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly looks the part because you had it's, that on the, the yeah. uh, NEC show. It, turns out it does actually scratch the roof, I thought I found out. So oh, <laughs> I bad did times. some felt on that before I put it, in. Yeah. put it back on again. But yeah, I did, I did also have this one as well, which is like a blue one to go into the, uh, into the thing. I've been watching a lot of Bosch lately, so I'm looking at Yeah, more. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Right, shall we see if we can actually get out? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Help! Yeah. Help! Help! <laughs> oh, we're fine. Phew. We're free. Now, unfortunately, we haven't been really able to compare boot size because Betty's boot, she, we're on a family trip. She's absolutely full of stuff, completely full. Uh, but we'll have a look here anyway. And Oh, I was going to say it's fairly shallow, but actually that's a big old spare wheel down there. It is. That's massive. That goes down. I was literally climbing in this boot earlier to try and get to the back of that. I had to, I had to crouch in the boot to reach the other end of it. Yeah because the spare wheel should be living up there, but I'm, I'm missing mm. the bracket, but. So you can probably still get a couple of bodies in there. Oh, easily, yes. Yeah. I mean, you have to make sure they are unconscious because they've added this thing. Um, I think in the late nineties added this in there so that they could escape. Oh, is wow. Really? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> that's really I, I, I've got one of those in that car, but that's because it's a solenoid release uh, on the yeah. boot. So mm. if it fails, you have to fold the seats <laughs> and <laughs> game, but this yeah. isn't a folding rear seat, is it? No, it's not, it's solid. Um, it's designed to be incredibly safe. I'm sure you've come across all this stuff in your research, but it's designed to take a 70 mile an hour rear impact Gosh. and keep on driving. Um, that there is the fuel tank over the rear axle because mm-hmm. like on a Rover P6, it's like the, the safest place in the car. Yeah, yeah. Although they've got that sticker on the dashboard because they did find people putting long, sharp things and it was puncturing the fuel tank in rear Ooh. accidents. So that sticker says put things laterally. Yeah, yeah, um, oh, that's what that's about. Yeah, but this also has a thing called fire shield on it as an aftermarket. So if you stick the camera underneath it, it's got a yellow thing around the rear axle and it's mm-hmm. a giant fire extinguisher. So if the car had rear-ended and it Yeah, because weren't there actually incidences of cars catching fire? There were, yeah. yeah. So despite them thinking this is perfectly safe, yeah, but once, once you get metal folding everywhere. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a massive fire extinguisher, which someone's added on this car. It cost about $700 wow. in the early noughties. So yeah, this is like fully equipped with everything. But, yeah, look at the size of the rear bumper. Yeah. Yeah, parking is a real issue because you have no clue where it ends. Well, no, similarly, and then I've got a tow bar. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'll remember that when you're parking yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah, I think with both of these cars, you kind of give up on street side parking in yeah. the UK. Yeah, you have to think Unless you see a, a space you can get a bus in. Yeah. You have to plan journeys quite mm. carefully about where you're going to stop at the other end. Super. Yeah. Well, thank you for showing me around your car. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, n- now we will each do a test of each other's cars, and the actual yeah. road test will be on each other's videos.
So thank you very much. See you and, soon. Uh, we shall see you in that future video or elsewhere. Farewell. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Come on, get out of the way, the popo's coming through. <laughs>